Hey everyone, I'm sorry I'm late today. I was gonna try to get on at nine, but that's because I normally wake up at 7.30, and today we didn't wake up until like 9.15. So, a little bit late. Had to get everyone situated, and I'm just going to um, take a second and share this out, because I wanna make sure that people can see it. So, Say hi when you join, let me know that you're watching, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask those as well. Um, I know that that'll happen more as we get going, but just want to make sure that you all already know that you're okay to ask questions whenever you want. And I'm just going to share this to a couple of places, and then we'll get started. So we'll share it there, and how about there, and maybe there too okay perfect and then let's also share it to my page right always want to share it to the page hey tiffany how are you doing today how's everyone doing today um today's topic is going to be really awesome because i am a massage therapist and it's something that i um I don't know, I kind of like go through phases on whether or not I have a lot of clients and summertime is just always pretty slow and dead. I feel like because Utah has so long of a winter season that everyone just like gets out and goes, goes, goes as much as they can during the summer. So they don't get as much massages, but it's been making me think a whole lot about those clients that I have that I see during the winter. Um, and then my own spirit, my own journey when it came to body work and all this stuff. So I really wanted to kind of get back to basics and my basics in the fact that I've been massage therapist for um, 10 years now. So yeah, let's share this to my page and then we'll get started. Sorry guys. Share to Karen Terrace. Share to page. There we go. All right, cool. So, um, for those of you who might not know me, my name is Karen Terrace, and I am a massage therapist. I am a 5D consultant. So, what that means is that I help you to get out of the third dimension when it comes to always. Um, just staying in the physical, kind of get you into that more spiritual, emotional um, realm, and really mental. Really get into those those topics that. Um, I don't know, they can be a little bit uncomfortable, but once you get into it, you can really see the truth in them, and then everyone creates their own truth. I, I truly, truly, truly believe that there is no way to convince someone of your opinion, because two people have never had the same experiences at all, so even if you feel like you're closely similar to them, it's impossible for them to see things from your point of view totally. So what you have to do is just um, have compassion and empathy and say your point. And then if they still don't agree with you, be okay with that and don't have a need to agree with them and not have a need to push them to your side. And I, um, so that's kind of like what I do. And then I do have a mastermind course coming out based on a book that I channeled that is going to be coming out at the end of the year the mastermind is for anyone who wants to help me with the implementation process of the book because the last chapter the last section of the book is going to be just filled with testimonials from people who go through my mastermind so they're able to to talk about their experiences um because it's going to change the world like no no questions asked this book is going to change the world if everyone reads it so um Today's topic is all about why we hold emotional trauma in our bodies, in our physical. And so I guess what we need to start with is, um, is kind of a definition. It's called a somato-emotional release. And this is something that occurs often when you get massage therapy work, especially deep work, where out of nowhere you'll start crying or you'll start laughing or you'll get really, really, really angry, not because it's painful, but because for some reason you're just angry. Um, and it's always, there's not ever really like a reason. You can't really pinpoint a reason as to why you are all of a sudden bawling while your massage therapist is working on your collarbone or, um, or when they're working in your abdomen or anything like that. So uh, an SCR, a somato-emotional release, is just when a physical 
release, such as massage therapy, also activates an emotional release, such as crying, anger, laughter, etc. And the reason why these are so interesting to me is because you can have an emotional trauma that occurred that wasn't even that big a deal. So for example, the uh, um, like it, with a car accident, let's say you get into a car accident and you get whiplash. There's like the actual physical part of it, but then years later when they take more x-rays, your neck is straightened and there's not really a reason for the pain anymore. They can't pinpoint with all the science that there is, and lots of people know that, you know, I am kind of a hippie, but at the same time, I love Western medicine. Um, it saved many of my friends' lives, and I definitely believe there's a time and a place for it. I don't believe that it should be used as much as it is, and I think that pharmaceutical companies are killing people for dollars, but um, Western medicine in general, is it's really mm -hmm. awesome that people aren't dying from, like, random ass diseases anymore, and for stupid shit, and tetanus, and random just bacteria and shit right so so you go to the doctor you've been in a car accident like five years ago you've done the therapy you've done everything but you still have this pain in the back of your neck it's still shooting migraines and then you go to a massage therapist or a, a regular therapist to shrink i don't like the word shrink but it works better because the word therapist i just massage therapist physical therapist mental therapist there's too many therapists um and you realize that you have held on emotionally to the story of your car accident. Okay? So even though on a physical level you've done the therapies, you've done everything you're supposed to, you've taken the muscle relaxants to help everything shift back to where it's supposed to be, so there's not an actual physical explanation as to why it hurts, but when you dive a little bit deeper, you find out that you're still emotionally attached to that story. Maybe getting in that car accident meant that you were unable to go on a vacation that your friends all went on. And so you're still um, a little bit bitter about that. Or maybe it caused you to lose your job and you still have not been able to find a new job after that car accident. Uh, Utah is a, high to, a right to hire, right to fire state. So they literally can fire you for pretty much nothing and say that it was for something else and even if it is like because you're you were in a car accident they can just say it was something else or not even say anything and you still get fired it's just how the law works which is you know um conservative values at all i i am a libertarian so you're going to hear all over the place for me but that's just because at the end of the day it's about freedom and sovereignty and your choices so um yeah we won't go down that topic but let's say that happened to you so you haven't been able to find a new job you've, you've busted through your savings all this stuff and it's all because of this car accident it was if i didn't get in that car accident if i didn't hurt that if that person didn't rear end me if this didn't happen if this if that if 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 this should have should 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 where does the word should come from? I'm going to let you guys answer. I'm going to give you a second to comment because if you watched my live last week, then I already gave you the answer. So I'll give me just one second. Where does the word should and if, where do those words come from? Hey, Kelly. Hey, Lori. Hey, Rochelle. Um, no answers. So the word should and if, they come from attachments. If you watched my video last week, I'm not going to go into this. I did like an hour video on attachments last week. Um, but essentially, an attachment is an unhealthy, one-sided um, bond that has occurred. So your physical plane, so we go back to this car accident. Your physical plane has released it because the doctors say that there's nothing wrong with your neck. They do the scans. They do... Oh, you missed it last week. It's fine, Kelly. It's all on my um, page. So not here on my personal profile. I share everything out to my business page just to try to keep it all in one place. But I do know that Facebook, I try not to think about Facebook algorithms, but I swear to God when I do lives on my page page, no one sees it. And if I do it here and then share it to my page, like hundreds of people will see it. So I try not to get let Facebook algorithms get me down, but I swear to God, they're real. Um, so you're in this car accident five years ago, 
you've done the therapy, you've done everything else, but you still have immense pain in your neck, it's shooting up, it's giving you migraines, there's no physical behind it, and then you realize that it's this emotional story that you have that this should have happened to me. This car accident caused these problems. It was this person's fault. It was the blame game. And because you're doing this and you're having this thought process over and over and over again about how the car accident is the reason why blank, the car accident is the reason why I can't find a job. The car accident is the reason why I'm completely broke. The car accident is the reason why I'm driving this beater car instead of my nice car that got totaled. Um, when you blame something over and over and over again, you form an attachment. And when you form the attachment, it has to manifest. It has to. It's, it's a law. It's a, it's a universal law. I talk about these laws in my book, in the mastermind. Come and join me. It's going to be fucking awesome. It starts in September. But we talk about the universal laws. And one of the universal laws is that um, of correspondence. And so the correspondence here is that you have this thought pattern. This car accident is the reason for blank. And the correspondence that you get from the universe is, okay, well, the car accident is going to cause pain. The car accident caused this pain, so I'm going to hold it here. This is where, um, you know, whiplash and all this, we're going to just continuously hold the tension here. This is where I'm going to hold the story. And that's what I tell my clients. I tell them you're holding a story here. You're holding a story um, in your side, in your neck, in your wherever. Because there, there won't be like a reason. They'll try to kick me out and I'm very, very attuned. I'm fucking awesome at what I do as a massage therapist. And I will be working through, stripping through and be like, their doctors are right. There's nothing. These suboccipitals really aren't that tight. And yet on the table, they're going, oh my God, oh my God, you're killing me. You got to back off. You got to back And I'm like, I haven't even started yet. Like, why why are you reacting so intensely so your muscles are able to take a lot more than what we physically or what we mentally think that's why when you get massages maybe the first time you work with a therapist you don't let them go as deep but as you continuously work with them you build more trust so you're allowed to, you let them go deeper um it's the same thing with your muscles when it comes to any sort of massage like you might you might think on a mental level, like, oh, she's pushing super hard. But if you have a good massage therapist, they're going to go as deep as your muscle needs. And they're not really going to listen to what you're saying because we've created so many blocks and protections that, um, that we, we think that we're going to get hurt way before we actually are. Or with this car accident, we are actually no longer in pain, but we've guarded it so much. We have this story so much that anyone just even going near it sets us off as if we have been stabbed in the back of the neck with an ice pick, even if there's not anything actually physically wrong. Um, these are protection processes. These are just attachments. Uh, again, this the car accident is a really good example. Another one is... Um, Mama drama. That's what I like to call it. So I have a client. He is fucking awesome. Like one of my favorite people on the planet. And last year he got a ton of body work, like a ton of it. The only time he wasn't on my table was like the month that I took off after having Zena. Like I stopped giving massages the middle of May or the end of May. I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure I was like 37 weeks pregnant when I gave my last massage. And then I didn't give another one until she was like three weeks old. So I had like a six week period. And that was the only period that he wasn't on my table getting worked on. And we got to this part where we were working in his spleen. So his upper left quadrant of his body. And I had stripped through plenty of areas before in his body. Like I said, he was on my table like sometimes even three times a week for 90 minutes. And I could not figure out why I would get near his ribs or come up from his hip. And when it was on the right side, he would get really, really angry and frustrated and really like grit his teeth and all this stuff. And then on the left side, he wouldn't even let me touch it for the most part. It wasn't mad. It was like, no, you got to back off. And I'm like, you gritted your teeth and dealt with it when I worked on your left side or your right side, but when I'm trying to work on your left side, you won't even let me touch it? Like, what is going on? So I did some research and looked into the the planes of the body, 
And in Chinese medicine, the left side of your body is your female side, your yin side, and the left side and the right side of your body is your yang, your masculine. And then when you get closer, as you get up close to the heart, we actually hold um, issues that have to do with our parents. Your dad's issues are going to be held over here by your liver, and your mom's issues are going to be held up here by your spleen. So that's why I call it the mama drama or the daddy drama. Um, if you have had issues with your – so with him, he had two, right? So his dad – um, wasn't a huge part of his life. There was a lot of anger, but he just kind of dealt with it because he knew from the beginning that that was kind of just how his life was. His dad was never really around. Um, so there's a lot of bitter anger and resentment that was held up in his right side, but he was able to grit his teeth through it. He was able to deal with it because that's just what he had to deal with. Do you see these parallels in his actual like life? His dad wasn't around. But whenever he saw him, he just dealt with it. He knew that his parents had never been married. All this shit, blah, 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 that he just had to deal with. So when I worked on his right side, he just grit his teeth and fucking dealt with it. But with his mom, there was way more resentment, way more underlying issues because he had lived with his mom this whole time. He was like in his mid-20s at this point. And had never talked to her about them. Had never tried to break down these. Had never asked her, like, why didn't my dad and you get married? Like, what is that story? She, he had never asked because we teach our sons specifically, especially our sons, but we teach our children that they should be seen and not heard, that they should just sit there and that they need to just fucking deal with it. Like, this is just your life. This is the card you've been dealt. Have a good day and you're done. So when it came to his mom, he was completely shut down and blocked out. He just, his dad, he tried, he'd deal with it. He, he grit his teeth through it. He wanted to try to have some sort of relationship. And his mommy was just all like, whatever. I'm just going to stay this blocked off, closed ball, and nothing that has to do with you is ever going to get better because this is just the way it is. And he held it right here in his spleen. And for about two, two or three weeks, I tried to work on it. And I finally just got this intense hit. Now, this was before I had really started meditating, before I really started getting in tune with my intuition. I had given birth to Zena at this point, so I had already gotten in tune in a new level. Um, a lot of my clients told me that they had new insights from me after giving birth to Zena that I had never given them before. So I know that her birth had something to do with how I... Um, you know, it was the most terrifying moment of my entire fucking life. And yeah, I still did it and got through it and have this beautiful baby girl to prove it. Um, but he told me, or I was sitting there talking to him and I said, you know what? I don't think that this is physical. I really don't think that they're like, I can strip through your hamstrings. I can strip through your neck. I can strip through every other part of your body just fine. But when we try to get up to your ribs and try to like really detach your ribs and give that space, cause your ribs are supposed to be able to come out. They're supposed to float around. Um, and a lot of people's aren't, a lot of people's are like really attached. I was like, I can't get up in there. I can't get up underneath the rib cage, which is like going towards your heart. Again, all these, um, um, energetic planes that when you look into um, Eastern modalities such as shiatsu, acupressure, all this stuff, they have literally every single part of your body is correlated to an emotion or a mental state. And I was like, I don't know what it is, but I think you need to see a therapist. And I have an amazing life coach and she's the bomb.com. She's been helping me and Ryan or me since 2013, Ryan and I since 2014. Like you should go see my, my life coach. So he agrees. I don't know how many of you have friends that are like 23, 24 who are guys, but most of them don't want to go see a therapist. But he agreed to go see this therapist, this life coach that I have. She's amazing. Um, and within two weeks of seeing her, we were able to strip through the stuff on the right side completely, no problem. So we had processed the shit with his dad by talking to the therapist and be able to get through it. Because I had messaged my life coach too and been like, hey, so I'm sending my friend Shane. Shane, 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 And this is how it is. And this is what's going on. And yeah, so so she and I kind of tag teamed it a little bit. But it was really awesome. And he he did amazing. And then about a month into it, we were able to strip out the left side. And by the time we were done, he was seeing 
the therapy, the life coach and seeing me. And by the time we worked through all of this for about three or four months, he was in a better state mentally. He was in a better state emotionally. He was in a better state physically. He took a like a month long trip by himself up to Canada. Before this, he had been depressed and anxious and all this other stuff that really he couldn't figure out why. Like he was 24. He had an awesome life going on and there was no reason for him to be as sad and upset as he was about life. Um, and it was because he was getting all this physical work done. So here's my, here's the other side of that. If you get a ton of body work done, like he was doing, he's my best example for this. He was getting body work done for two or three years, just body work, only body work. He would see me once, twice, three times, four times a week, even sometimes for 60 to 60 minutes to two hour sessions one to four times a week for two years, working on his physical body, trying to let go of all this stuff. He'd been a martial artist. He'd been a gymnast, snowboarder, rock climber, like stunt double, freaking badass motherfucker right here. But we were only ever working on the physical. And I could not, could not, could not, could not figure out why this guy needed so much work done. Like I didn't mind because he was paying me, right? But I still couldn't figure out why. I couldn't. It just did not make sense. And then once I had Zeno, once I was able to tune into that next level, um, and I'm not saying you have to have a baby naturally by yourself to be able to tune into the next level. It's just my journey. Um, (laughs) But once I got to that next level and I was able to say, you know what? I think you need some head work. I think you need to talk to like a a mental professional about this because, um, I don't, I don't have any solutions for you. And we were also kind of friends and like, I'm sure that there was like a trust layer going on there that he wasn't willing to, to break all the way that he could with a total stranger, but I could see it within two weeks of going to see this life coach. He was having results of being able to let go of things that he had never been able to let go of. He was able to release his jaw. So something that a lot of people will do in massage is actually they'll clench their jaw while they're getting worked on. And that doesn't help you at all. Clenching your jaw actually also clenches your pelvic floor. And so if you're having work done on your hips or your legs or anything and your pelvic floor is all like tightened, those are where all of the attachments go up into your pelvis. So it's not actually releasing anything. I actually, I tell a lot of my clients to yawn. If they are um, going through an, an extreme moment where like, I can tell that their muscles are going to let me in, but they're starting to mentally kick me out. I will tell them to yawn. And you can see it. They'll be like, and I'll be like, no, yawn. And once they really yawn, did you see how my whole body just relaxed with that? My shoulders dropped down a little bit. My face got more relaxed. Just the simple act of opening your jaw, opening all of this, getting good, deep oxygen in will relax your body. And that's the same thing that happens in massage a lot. Um, So if clients are really clenching, I'll tell them to yawn. And I would ask him to yawn and he couldn't. It was, it was crazy. He'd be like, and I'm like, you're not yawning. I can see your chest not moving. Why, Why do you think that you're yawning right now? You're not. And then once he started seeing the the life coach, he was able to. Um, And then we were able to release it and all this other stuff. And I haven't seen him for a couple of months now when it comes to massage therapy because he finally got over it. He thought that it was all this physical shit. He thought, you know, my back always hurts, my side always hurts, all this crazy stuff. It was like, I understand you're an extreme sports guy, but at the same time, you know better. Like, you know to stretch. You know how to do all this other stuff. So why... Why is it not releasing? Why is it not letting go? And that's because it was a physical, it wasn't just a physical trauma. It wasn't just his sports. It was the emotional side of it. Why was he pushing himself so hard? Because he loved the adrenaline rush of doing the sports. And when he wasn't doing sports, he was depressed. Doesn't help if you're depressed, if you're not going to go talk to someone about it. And I'm not saying like depressed as in like depression. I'm talking about the woe is me the meh, my life sucks. Mm, All my friends have girlfriends and all my friends live other places. I just wish not like clinical depression that again, that's, um, 
you know what, fuck it, I'm going to say it. I'm probably going to piss a whole lot of people off, but it has to be said. Any, any physical problem that you have, especially like a major one, like depression, fibromyalgia, those are physical manifestations of your emotional state. So yes, depression causes hormonal imbalances and chemical imbalances in the brain, but if you work on your mental shit, it goes away. Same thing with fibromyalgia. I've said this over and over and over and over again. I know I've got a lot of people on here that have fibro, and I'm sure that I, you know, maybe you don't, maybe you've unfollowed me and you're not going to hear this, but I had fibromyalgia for 10 years. 10 years. I don't have it anymore. I don't say that I have fibromyalgia. Degenerative disc is, degenerative arthritis, maybe still, because you can actually see the degeneration happening in my joints when you look at an x-ray, but not fibro. I don't have fibromyalgia anymore. I refuse to have it because all fibromyalgia is, is a diagnosis of non-diagnosis, meaning you had to have not had lupus, you don't have MS, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have this, all these things they can test in a lab, you don't have it, so you must have fibromyalgia. I had a fucked up head. I had an entitlement problem. I had a accountability problem. I had a my life sucks problem, even though my life didn't fucking suck at all. I've been married for almost 10 years. I have an almost 10 year old son. I have two other children. I live in a beautiful house in a beautiful part of the country in a beautiful part of the state that I live in. My life does not suck. Five years ago, I would tell you every day of my life that my life sucked. And five years ago, I was in the most amount of pain from my fibromyalgia. I stopped taking the medication. You know, I changed the way I was thinking. I really made, yeah, see, see, exactly, exactly. I am totally going to murder your name, Ads, Adslia. That is exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. As soon as you can pull yourself up long enough, you can, you can just see the world from a different place. And that brings me back to what I said at the beginning, where you can't make anyone see your point of view. I would never walk up to one of my friends who has fibromyalgia and be like, hey, bitch, it's in your fucking head. Get over it. I would never do that. I would never do that because it's not my place to tell them that it's in their head. It's been my experience. It's been a lot of people I know's experience that is soon, lots of people in the, um, the, the transformational coach, whatever you want to call it, industry. They have overcome. My name is Angie. Aha. Okay. My real name is Angie. Perfect. That's way easier to say. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, you know, a lot of people in this, in the, in the spiritual realm, the empowerment realm, the, the motivational speakers, all these people, they always have some sort of crazy past story, right? And a lot of them were diagnosed with fibromyalgia in the early 2000s, like 2005 to 2010 era. A lot of them. And it was because they didn't know as much about it. There was a lot more new medications coming out. I remember I personally was put on like nine different medications, including Lyrica and Tramadol and Naproxen. And those are the only three that I can ever remember. But I know that there were other ones. There was a sleeping pill and there was an anti-nausea pill. And then as soon as he tried to give me a pill to help with the side effects of another pill I was taking, I was fucking done. And that's when I switched to cannabis and essential oils, eating healthy and yoga. That's your story, guys. That's, that's your life. You get to go from being the girl that got into a car accident, that got knocked up, that got married, that got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, that got, went crazy and drove for two hours with having no idea that I was driving, to quitting the pain medications, to being a cannabis activist, but still living in a ton of pain, to finally, to hitting rock fucking bottom, hating my life, everything in the world and then I finally reached my rock bottom point and that's when I started seeing a life coach aka my therapist and my massage therapist all the time at least at, at the beginning I was seeing them each 
on alternating weeks. So I would see my massage therapist and the next week I'd see my life coach. The next week I'd see my therapist, my massage therapist, and I'd see my life coach. And then as it moved on, I was able to kind of spread that out and change it around. But I would love, I'm going to post some pictures of the way that my, my knees used to look. The knees held, hold a lot of our stability, how we feel in our lives is stability. So if your knees are weird, your ankles, things like that, your body literally holds everything that you think, everything that you feel, your body will hold it. And it will hold on fucking tight. Because we instinctually, biologically, in a lab can be proven, we learn more from negative experiences than we do from positive ones. And this is something that we held on to from our biology from years and years from you know, tens of thousands of years ago when we were still hunting in caves and still, you know, sharpening our knives with a rock or sticks, sharpening sticks with a rock to go kill a deer, right? So we had to learn more from our negative experiences at that time of our human evolution. We are so fucking far past that. And I'm talking about here in the West. I am probably going to do a whole live in the next week or two about how it's our job to help the people in lower countries. But right now we're just going to talk about us. Those of you that can get this message from me right now, we are so fucking beyond sticks sharpening with a rock that that need to learn mostly from negative experiences is actually hindering us a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, because we are holding on to these traumas that we don't need to. We don't. I knew that my life was awesome. I knew that I had a kick-ass husband. I knew that I had a sweet kid. I knew that I was on my way to buying my parents' house. I knew I was like almost there. But because I couldn't, I couldn't remove myself from the situation enough, I was allowing it to just bury me. And that's when my pain was so intense. I remember sometimes sitting in my therapist's office when Ryan and I started going together because um, my, my conversation switched from this is all of my problems, me, 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 to my fucking husband, my fucking kid, my fucking husband, my fucking kid. So finally my therapist was all like, can I be your husband? Because I don't think he's probably as big of a dick as you'd say he is. And he's not. Ryan's fucking awesome. Everyone who's met Ryan knows that he's the sweetest guy and extremely patient for having me as his wife. Um, but I remember one time sitting there when he was in there with me, I was having a huge fibromyalgia flare up because we were going to start talking about that day. We were talking about money actually. And I can remember it clearly in my head, sitting there with my arms folded, just completely like turtlenecked, just, just like this essentially the whole time, just my whole body was rigid and in pain and I couldn't move and I couldn't think. And it was because I had a really bad money story and I felt really guilty about the fact that we had this huge wedding and stuff like that. And we had gone into a lot of debt because of it. And it wasn't like, it was a frivolous thing. Um, unnecessary, like courthouses are invented for a reason. And for some reason, my 19 year old brain couldn't separate marriage from wedding. So whatever. And I always held that like I, like it was my fault. So when I knew that we were going to talk about money in our next therapy session, I had given myself a fibro flare so that I could be less in my therapist. Even said like, look at her. She is in so much pain right now. You can see it. What do you do for her when she's like this? And Ryan just kind of was like, I don't, I don't know what to do for her because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like she's, she's fine. She didn't hurt herself. Like there's not, I don't understand it. And that's a huge problem that people who are the loved ones of those with these kinds of diseases, because you can't, you can't see it from the outside. You can't um, know why they're acting a certain way or anything like that. You just have to believe them. And again, that brings me back one more time. I really, really, really want to emphasize this point. It is not your place to tell someone what's wrong with them or why it's your place to love them without judgment and to be there when they're ready to talk to you about it. Do you know how many times I wanted to just fucking scream at my friend slash client? You have fucking mommy issues. You need to go see a shrink. But I never said it that way to him because he wouldn't have responded. Same thing with my friends with fibro. You know what? I just want to let you know that your fibromyalgia is all in your head. And all you got to do is just snap out of it. 
it doesn't work like that, guys. I've been seeing a life coach for five years. This is the first time in my life or in my in the last five years that I'm not seeking advice from anyone. I still get my massages because I think massages are literally something that we've lost in the West that could save us if more people got massages. That's that's an honest thing that I believe. You'd be on less pills and have more access to your energy fields. I know about energy for a long time, but I never really got it and I never tapped into it. And now that I've been able to tap into it, my healing has just grown exponentially to the point where the only pain I have is right here. It's right here. And it's actually attached directly to my solar plexus. And we've been working on it for about three weeks now. And it's a self-worth issue. That's all it comes down to is I have a little bit of self-worth stuff still, like a little chip on my shoulder that I've been carrying around. It's not like, and then I also co-sleep. So like, I want to make that clear. Like there's absolutely physical traumas. Physical traumas are totally real. I co-sleep with my baby, so my arm ends up like this a lot. So a lot of this is because of that too. But when you get massages on the same area over and over, when you're getting work done on the same area over and over, when you're doing everything on the physical plane to release and it's not working, that's when you have to look at an emotional side of it or the mental side of it so this will release but it never releases all the way and my massage therapist he's amazing uh, he's actually a reiki master and all these other things too so he's able to pick up on these a lot more um he's much more in tune i'm i'm getting there but he's been a massage therapist for like 25 years or something like that he's amazing um but i just really want to to close and solidify with this point that you you are the master of your story. And if you've hung on this long, I know you've been waiting for the one, the one thing you can do to release this and you're not going to like it. The number one thing you can do to release this trauma is self care. It's taking care of yourself first. It's getting that meditation. in if you need it, it's getting the stretching in. stretching is so important. And yet we always like, ignore it. Uh, it's, it's your self care. It's the number one thing. If I didn't decide five years ago when I was finally making money again, like a pretty good job selling Medicare insurance. If I didn't decide five years ago that I was worth seeing a massage therapist, that I was worth going to seeing a life coach, that I wouldn't be where I am today. It's as simple as that. If I didn't decide if I, not anybody else, not my husband, not my parents, no one else, if I didn't decide that I was worth the investment, that I would still be taking, I would probably have had surgeries by now. Like, I can't even imagine what my life would have been like, actually. It would have been really sad. I might have even committed suicide by now. Like, really, I couldn't tell you. But I was at rock, rock bottom. Rock bottom. And... I finally saw a glimmer of hope when I started making the money to be able to invest in myself that, you know what, I'm going to take this extra money, not all of it, but like $75 one week and $40, so about $100 every month, I'm going to invest that in me, in my care, in my massages, in my mental health, in all of that, started to see, going to yoga, all this stuff. That is the number one trick. It's what my entire life's purpose is, is to teach you that taking care of yourself is the fastest way for you to be able to take care of other people. And we live in a world of service. Every soul on this planet has a goal to serve. Whether your goal is to be a doctor, whether your purpose is to be an artist, whether your purpose is to be a chef, whether your purpose is to be a novelist, you are serving. You are serving someone. Someone is getting a benefit from you doing what you're doing. Um, I see Doug's on here. He was an EMT. That's a huge service thing. Nicole, she's a stay-at-home mom. Guess what? We need stay-at-home moms too. But stay-at-home moms are probably the ones that have the most guilt over taking care of themselves because of the money story of it's not my money, it's our money. If you made the decision together 
that you were going to stay home and he was going to work, then you should be able to talk to him together about how you getting a massage once a month is going to be better for the whole house. Because if you get a massage once a month, maybe you'll have more energy or you won't be in as much pain or you will have released some of your emotional trauma, whatever the fuck it is. It's not worth it. Your kids are suffering. Your stay at home mom is tougher than my job as a paramedic. Fuck yeah, it is, Doug. <laughs> you're doing kind of both now though, right? Well, you've been a stay at home dad for a while now with Ashley. You're doing awesome. It's fucking awesome watching you with her. Um, thank you for being an advocate. Also, Doug, I just want to make sure I say that. Um, McCall, yeah, my hubby needs to figure a lot out. Yes, so this is where I go with a conversation. Just going to wrap up real quick. Your self-care has nothing to do with your fucking husband. Your self-care has nothing to do with your kids. They are going to benefit extremely when you take care of yourself. Um, January Harshi, she is the founder of Birth Without Fear. She is the one who started the, Ryan really needs to do a class for husbands. <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know, my, uh, my husband's fucking amazing. I already said that. I've had a, a few people recently be like, you know what, Ryan just needs to teach a class and teach my husband how to be that awesome too. So <laughs> that might be coming. If you've got a husband that needs to get their shit together, let me know and I'll, I'll find a way for him to put that together. Um, but, oh man, it just started pouring rain. Uh, but I just want to end on that is that January Harshi, the, the creator of Birth Without Fear, she started this whole movement called the Self Love Generation, where she, at first she was talking about teaching her kids how to love themselves, how to accept themselves. She is six, um, God bless her. And then it morphed, and now she's really talking about our own self care as moms, as taking the time for ourselves to to meditate. She's really been a big advocate of meditation. I think that that's an easy one. That's an extremely easy one that you can start with. It doesn't cost any money. It takes some time. It takes five to 30 minutes every day to committing that, no, I am worth five fucking minutes by myself to sit here and to zen. And at first it's hard. At first, you've got like a thousand, I should be doing the dishes. Oh my God, is that the baby crying? I should be doing this. In a week, this is going on. All these fucking things. And then it gets easier. And you start being like, I need to do the dishes. I need to do this next weekend. I need to breathe. What about breathe? And it just starts getting easier and easier and easier to not judge your thoughts as they come up, not judge your, I'm not meditating right. There's no such thing as not meditating right. Some days you're gonna have a really active brain and some days you're gonna have a not so active brain. You're still doing it. You're still committing to it. You're still taking care of yourself. Massage, same thing. Pedicure, same thing. Eating healthy, same thing. So many moms out there don't eat because they don't have time. It's fucking bullshit. Like, keep smoothies. Do whatever you need to do. But if every single person out there would take accountability for just themselves, no one else, just themselves, it would trickle. It would be like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? Like, as soon as you take care of you, you are able to take care of other people. It's just, it's so simple. It's that whole, like, I have a glass of water right here. I have an empty cup of water from there. Can I take any more water from here? Oh, the street. Can I take any water from here and put it in? No. Look, there's nothing there. Nothing there at all. But guess what? Now we both have water. There's some water for you. There's some water for me. I love you all. I'm going to finish with that. Have a great day.